Hey guys, welcome back to one, another live video here. Um, if I've not met you already, my name's Jake, I'm one of the reptile keepers here at the park. But I also do a lot of work with funnel web spiders and that is exactly what we're going to be talking about in today's video. Now right now I'm sitting in what we call our spider venom room. This is where we keep all of our male funnel web spiders here at the park, our adults. And right now we have about 300 male funnel webs in this room right now. So it's certainly not a room that you want to be in if you are an arachnophobe. Now, sitting in front of me here, we've got these jars, and this is where we keep our male funnel webs. And I'm actually going to get one out of the jar here right now, and uh, give you guys a bit of a nice close look. This one's a bit reluctant to come out. And now he's out, he's walking around, but you do not have to worry, he's re uh, restrained in this, uh, this little barrier here. Uh, a myth that we hear about funnel web spiders is that they can jump, and also that they can climb smooth surfaces. But you can see by looking at this spider right now, both of those things are certainly false. They cannot jump and they cannot get out of a uh, barrier like this. Now this is a male Sydney funnelweb spider. They are certainly Australia's most dangerous spider species. Now luckily for us, uh, if you live within the Sydney region, that's exactly where they like to live as well. You find them from Nowra on the south coast, up through Sydney to the central coast here, and then even north to Newcastle and also uh, west to Lithgow in the Blue Mountains as well. Now, of course, that's where the majority of people like to live as well, the Sydney region, which means Sydney funnelwebs are a spider that people come into contact with on a fairly regular basis. Now, the main time that you are likely to encounter a funnelweb spider like this is during our summer, from about uh, October through to about April, so right now, um, that is your funnelweb spider season, and that is when you are most likely to encounter one of these spiders out and moving around. Now, occasionally bites do occur from this species. It's a very dangerous spider and it can certainly be lethal if you were to be bitten by one. But fortunately, there is an anti-venom uh, for the funnel web spider and we actually play the, uh, the first part in that role um, here at the park. We actually milk these spiders and that's exactly what I'm gonna be showing you here this afternoon. I'm gonna give you a bit of a demonstration with a few of these spiders. Now the first thing we do, we grab our spider here, we pop it back into our barrier, and then we get the spider to stand up for us. Many of you may have seen a picture, or maybe even a video of a funnel web spider rearing up. And they do that because they have to expose their fangs. The fangs are located underneath them, so they have to stand up like that in order to expose them and bite something. Now when they do, and they're really annoyed, like this one here, they will begin to secrete tiny drops of venom just on the tip of each vein. And all we do, we go along with this little glass pipette, and we just very simply remove those drops of venom as they appear. Now really the main problem or challenge with milking a male funnel web is they only give you a tiny, tiny amount of venom. They have what we call a very low venom yield. Only a few drops, maybe two or three drops if we're lucky. Which is why it's very important for us here at the park to have hundreds of fun webs, and that way we can be extracting enough venom to produce that anti-venom. It's very important work here we do at the park, and uh, we've been involved in the production of that fun web spider venom, anti-venom rather, uh, right from the very beginning. Fun web spider anti-venom has been available since the early 1980s, and since its production, we have not seen a single death from a male fun web spider. That is a very, very good result. We have not seen a single death, but unfortunately prior to that, quite a number of deaths from male funnel webs, just like this one here. We're gonna milk this one as well. We'll get him to stand up. There's a nice big drop of venom just on that bank closest to me. Now the venom of a male funnel web is what we call a neurotoxin, which means it affects your central nervous system or your brain. And uh, basically what the venom does, it stops messages being sent between your brain and your muscles. Now of course your diaphragm in your chest is a very large muscle. If that's not functioning properly, then of course you're going to have lots of difficulty breathing. And uh, of course things are going to start to go downhill very, very quickly if that starts to occur. On the web spider is very, very dangerous. If you are bit by one, you certainly need to take it very, very seriously. Now what I might do, I might leave that spider there and I'm actually going to come out to you in spider world and I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the first aid procedure if you were to be bitten by a funnel web spider. So I'll see you in just a moment. Let's hope the pet over here in front of the 
this big spider. All right, now uh, we're out here in our spider world exhibit here at the park, and we've just seen the milking of the funnel web spiders. That's something that you can see if you visit the park. We have that large window there so that you guys can uh, view that funnel web spider milking. We do a daily milking presentation at 9.45, but I also typically spend two or three hours every single afternoon sitting in that chair. Now, something that is very important in relation to funnel web spiders is, of course, first aid. Just because we do not see deaths from funnel web spiders anymore does not mean that we don't see bites. Each and every summer we see quite a number of bites from male funnel web spiders and knowing what to do if you are bitten is a very important thing. Now what you do want to have on hand is one of these. This is called a compression bandage. And you can pick these up of course at any good chemist. A very important thing to have, particularly if you of course spend a lot of time out in the bush, maybe bushwalking, fishing, camping, that sort of thing. But Actually, with funnel web spiders, we do see a lot of bites occurring in the home as well. So it's good to have on you wherever you are. Now, if I were to be bitten by a funnel web spider, say here on my index finger, what I would do is wrap around the bite site two or three times, about the same tension that you would for a sprained ankle or wrist, and then we then head up the limb. Now, I've got a watch on here today. I would certainly get rid of that. Rings, bracelets, bangles, same deal. Take them off. Uh, because you don't want to obstruct the bandage at all, you want to make it nice and easy to get on. I'll go over the top of it just for the process today. I've got a long sleeve shirt on, we'll go straight over the top of that as well. And you want to keep that tension nice and tight, as I mentioned, extend that bandage right to the top of the limb. Go right to the shoulder if you were bitten on the hand or the arm. If you were bitten on the toe, which many fun web spiders do occur on the feet, say so you're putting your foot into a shoe, maybe the spider's hiding out in that shoe, then you would bandage your entire leg and uh, you would then immobilize the limb, whether it be your arm or your leg, and then you get yourself off to hospital as quickly as you possibly can. Now, this is the exact same procedure for all of our Australian venomous snake bites, but with a fun web spider bite, you really wanna be getting yourself to hospital as quickly as you can. Snakes as well, of course, but more so with a funnel web. We have seen deaths from funnel web spiders in just over an hour. So it is a very serious, very fast acting venom, but by applying a bandage here at the point of the bite and then getting yourself to hospital and getting anti-venom, you are giving yourself the best chance at survival. And I'll mention again, we have not seen a single death now from a male funnel web in 40 years. So this procedure and the anti-venom works very well. It's very effective. And uh, despite still seeing bites, we don't see deaths. And that all starts right here at the park with our very important work that we do with our venom extraction or milking of the spiders. Um, we've had a few questions sent in. Yep. Um, how do you tell the difference between a boy and a girl funnel web? One of the main differences between a male and a female is the size. If you see a male, they'll always be a fair bit smaller than the female and they tend to be a little more skinny as well. They have long skinny legs and uh, the back part, which we call the abdomen, is very slender as well, as opposed to the female where it may almost be a perfect circle. Another thing that the male will have, and I can demonstrate on this spider here, uh, they have these spurs coming out from their second front leg. Only the male funnel web has that, so if you see a female, you'll never see those spurs. It's a very easy way to tell the difference between the two, but in saying that, you do need to be very, very close, so maybe only look that close if you have the spider inside a jar. Uh, what do funnel web spiders eat? Out in the wild, they feed on a wide variety of things. They might be feeding on crickets or worms or cockroaches, uh, potentially even small lizards, but most of their diet, most of what they're feeding on is gonna be small invertebrates or insects. Um, with the males and females, do you milk both of them? We actually don't. We have females here, which we use for demonstration. We can certainly show you the difference between the two. But when we're milking the spiders for antivenom, we are only milking the male funnel web. And the reason for that, because they are that little bit more toxic, they're six times more toxic than a female, their venom actually produces a higher quality antivenom. So we wanna be producing the best antivenom we can possibly produce, and we do that by using the venom of the male funnel web. Um, how long do they live for? It's very different depending on whether we're talking about a male or a female. A female funnel web could live 20 years. It's pretty impressive, you don't typically picture a spider living for that long, um, and that's the females, but a male, not so lucky. If you're a bloke in the funnel web spider world, you might live for 
three or four years maximum. So not a very long life for the male, but pretty long life potentially for the female as long as she doesn't run into any predators along the way. Is that because the, well, there's a rumor that goes around that males eat the females or females eat the males after mating? Yeah, correct. Uh, with most spider species, the male has to be very, very careful directly after mating because uh, he can very easily be eaten by the female. In most species, you know, certainly redbacks, most tarantulas and certainly funnel webs, the female is bigger than the male. She can overpower him quite easily. She can kill him but she's not going to eat that male herself, she'll store him away and keep him somewhere and uh, when those babies first hatch out of their egg sac, their first meal is actually generally their own dad, so pretty brutal for the male funnel web. Do they have a lot of babies? Uh, they can have quite a number. Um, what we've seen typically with egg sacs here at the park is between 50 and maybe even up to as many as 150, so certainly not as many as some of your overseas tarantulas, which, which could have thousands. Um, but still enough. I'm sure you would all agree that 150 baby funnel webs is more than enough. Um, can they jump? Uh, no, they cannot jump. They're a strictly ground-dwelling spider, so they spend all their life on the ground. They're down in their burrows. They might be able to climb up a piece of wood that's got a bit of texture to it. Uh, but as far as jumping goes, they cannot jump and they cannot climb a smooth surface. And we see that when the males are wandering around and they fall into swimming pools because they can't get back out. They'll simply move into the middle, then they typically sink, or maybe they even follow the edge around and then they end up in the skimmer box. That's quite a popular way that people find funnel web spiders in their backyards, in the pool skimmer box. How often do they breed? Is it once a year or do they have several breeding seasons? Yeah, typically um, once a year, and the male funnel web might only have one breeding season in his entire life, and that is of course going back to potentially being eaten by a female. So once he hits two and a half or three years old, he's ready to go, he can head out and find a female, but he might only get one shot to pass on his genetics. So he might only get one chance to breed, but the females uh, will typically breed once a year, ideally, and that happens during the, the peak season, which is, as I mentioned, from about October through to about April. So we're just coming towards the end of our funnel web spider season right now. What's the distribution? Is there more than one species or is it only the Sydney funnel web? Yeah, so the funnel web spider group is quite large. There's over 40 species of funnel web and they do vary in size quite dramatically. There's some that get much, much larger than a Sydney funnel web. One of those would be a northern tree dwelling funnel web, which can get potentially double or three times the size of a big female Sydney funnel web. Um, now those are also very, very toxic, but the Sydney funnel web is the main one that we tend to see bites and back in the day deaths from, and they only occur within the Sydney region. Um, can they be found in, like you said then, um, people asking the specifics, so are they found on the west coast of Australia? Yep. So all the funnel web spiders are only found along the east coast. So from Tasmania, um, they extend right up through Victoria, New South Wales and into Queensland, but there is no species of funnel web spider in Central Australia or WA. They're all restricted to the east coast and some of them, as I mentioned, may live in trees, some of them live on the ground. So they are quite variable in terms of what they do and, and how they look as well. Um, are all the species of spider in Australia dangerous or is it just the funnel web that you need to worry about? Certainly not. Um, most spiders will have a venom which they use to subdue their prey. For example, the huntsman spider, it's got venom. Um, it uses that against its insect prey. But if you were to be bitten by a huntsman spider, that venom is not particularly toxic to humans. It just so happens that the funnel web spider venom, when tested, um, it just happens to be very, very toxic to primates, so monkeys, um, but also humans. Now, we don't exactly know why. There's no native primates in Australia. Funnel web spiders aren't found anywhere else. But of course, there's plenty of people here. There's plenty of funnel webs. And uh, yeah, when the two come together, unfortunately, it can be a very serious situation for the person bitten. Um, but by applying a bandage, again, getting up to hospital, you're going to give yourself the best possible chance. And last question, why do you milk them? And is it actual milk that comes out of their <laughs> fangs or is it venom? What, and what do you do with it? Where does it go after yep. you milk it? So we milk them for the production of anti-venom and certainly not milk, it's actually their venom. It's being produced in the venom glands and then uh, transferred to the end of the fang. And that's typically what would happen if they were to bite something. The fangs would penetrate and then the venom would be injected. 
Now it's not injecting into, into anything when we're milking it, it's just sitting at the end of the vein, and then we can go along and remove that as we saw. And then once we've done that, we'll take that venom, we flush it out of that little glass pipette that we used into a small vial, and then we'll send that venom, once we've got a lot of it, say maybe 100 or 150 little vials, we'll send it all down to Melbourne, um, to a place called Securus, which is where they have a farm, they operate a farm, and they have a wide variety of animals. They have uh, cattle, horse, sheep, and uh, with the funnel web spiders, they're actually using large rabbits. They'll inject a small amount of venom into that rabbit, and then over a period of time, they will gradually increase the dose that's injected. And then at the end of that period, say eight or nine months, they will be able to draw some blood from that rabbit, and that rabbit's actually developed antibodies to that venom. They can then separate those antibodies, and that is essentially what you're left with is the antivenom. Um, so it's a byproduct of a rabbit. So it's a bit of a weird way the system works. We're using the highly toxic venom itself to create the cure, but it works very, very well, and uh, it all starts here at the park. Are we the only place in Australia that does it? We are, the only place in the world. Um, and it works quite well because we sit smack bang in the middle of their range, so it's very easy for us to obtain large numbers of funnel web spiders. Um, and we actually re receive most of them from public donations. So people catching them as they encounter them and then they can donate them to us here at the Reptile Park. We're still taking donations, but you can also drop your spiders into any of your drop-off points and you can find a drop-off point near you on our website. But they go as far south as the Sutherland Shire, um, right down on the south coast, all the way up to Newcastle. No, I, said, I know I said last question a few times ago, but let's make this one our actual last question. Um, what's their habitat like? So we've talked about where they live in Australia. Do they um, live in trees? Do they live in the ground, burrows? What do they do? Yep, so as, as far as the Sydney funnel web spider goes, which is the one we're working with, um, they're a strictly ground dwelling spider. And what they're doing, they're actually building their burrows and their web underneath things usually, so they like to be nice and tucked away. So they'll tend to go underneath the rock and then make their burrow under that. And if you were to find one out in the bush, if you wanted to find one and go looking for them, where you would look for is kind of a wet gully um, in a bit of eucalypt forest, um, down where you've got some running water potentially up on the bank, um, where you've got that uh, damp dirt, that's what they like to burrow into. And they're typically not going very deep. Uh, their burrow might be 30 or 40 centimetres in length. So they're sitting down there, they're just waiting for something to come by. They'll set these little trip wires out the front of their burrow, and then when something passes by, a food item, they'll run out, they grab it, and then they head back in. And the females are actually spending pretty well all their time down in the burrow. It's only the male that tends to leave his burrow during summer and uh, move around, which means he's the one that we're far more likely to come into contact with. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Again, one last question. That's in the wild. You said before that people can come across them in their houses. Where, where do people need to look out in yep. their house? Yeah, so during that time when the male funnel web is moving around looking for a female, you'll often come out of the bush and wander into your backyard. Sometimes they fall into swimming pools. Um, and often what they'll do, they head into damp places like the laundry or even the kitchen, they'll hide out in there. And if you've got a pile of clothes lying around on the ground or a pair of shoes sitting outside, maybe they're out on the back porch, uh, that is a perfect spot because that male funnel web has to find somewhere to hide during the day. They don't like the sun, they need to get away from it. So if he's left his burrow and he's too far from it, can't get back before the sun rises, he's gonna find somewhere temporary to hide out and that's typically where he goes, which is a very, it's very important to check your shoes, check your clothing, and if you're gardening or chopping wood, moving logs around, make sure you're wearing gloves as well. The fangs are very long, they can certainly go through something like your average gardening glove, but it's far better to have something between you and the fang than just having your bare hands. So make sure you're uh, using um, you know, your safety equipment when you're working in the backyard as well, and you're keeping your backyard nice and tidy. All right, now we're gonna finish up there, guys. Thanks very much. I hope you learned a little bit about what we do with our funnel web spiders here at the park. It's very important work. We love them. We have hundreds of them, and uh, we'll see you next time. Thank you, guys. Enjoy. Cheers.